Union Senator Bud, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The purpose and mission of our military is to provide trained and ready service members capable of deterring aggression and winning America's wars should deterrence fail. I see some heads nodding, but let me just ask, uh, uh, would you all agree with that statement, uh, Secretary Camarillo? I would, Senator. Uh, Secretary Raven? Yes. And Secretary Jones? Yes, Senator. Oh, thank you. Uh, millions of Americans right now are genuinely wondering how diversity, equity, and inclusion, gender ideology, and providing taxpayer funding to facilitate abortions increases the military's readiness. They're also wondering whether military service aligns with their values. So, Mr. Raven, in your written testimony, you acknowledge that when you state uh, today's youth aspire to a lifestyle that maximizes work-life alignment, where a job and the organization they work for are not just a means to an end, but an expression of their values. So other than the pulse surveys uh, previously mentioned, have the services studied or even considered whether a hyper-focus on DEI, gender ideology, uh, and abortion is actually negatively impacting recruiting outside of the pulse survey? Uh, Secretary Cam Camarillo? Our surveys were very comprehensive in terms of uh, barriers to survey, or barriers to service, excuse me, Senator. And so the, the 16 that were identified on that survey were the ones that came up most frequently. And that's the Pulse survey, just to be clear? Yes, it was the one that was Do you have the data Army. outside the Pulse survey? Uh, other than that done by the Army, no. Um, Secretary Raven, any data outside the Pulse survey that's relevant here? Uh, so that uh, Pulse survey was not conducted by the Department of the Navy, but uh, I would refer you to some comments made by General Berger just this week in terms of how uh, DEI and other initiatives relate to building combat effective teams, and he views that as essential to the Marine Corps future. Secretary Jones. Senator, we have a number of different surveys and climate surveys in particular that address areas like um, discrimination, racism, those types of things. And so that's a focus of our diversity and inclusion efforts to make sure that we don't have parts of our workforce that feel marginalized, that feel like they aren't able to engage, and so that we can have high-performing teams. So thank you for, for that. Uh, you've added climate to it, but there's no data outside of this showing that climate, DEI, gender ideology, abortion negatively impact recruiting. Senator, if I could clarify that, that statement, um, climate surveys, that's a term that we use to assess the climate of an organization. They, they don't relate to climate change, so uh, just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, I appreciate you clarifying that. Thank you. Um, uh, changing a bit, Mr. Uh, Camarillo, what are some of the Army's learned lessons from its experience with reduced recruit standards back in the 1980s? Certainly, Senator Budd, uh, as we, the Army leadership has been consistent, our efforts are trying to invest in America's youth to help them to meet the standards that we've set for entry to service. So the best example of that is our Future Soldier Prep Course, which we initiated last year, where we've been able to bring in as many as 3,700 uh, potential candidates for entry into the Army. We've given them the training, both academics and physical skills, to be able to meet uh, our requirements, and we've had a successful outcome with as many as 98% coming through that program. That's great. I heard you mention that in your opening comments and um, elaborate on that just now. Uh, Secretary Raven, last month we learned the Navy was giving a clean slate to sailors who failed their physical fitness assessments, effectively lowering the standards. Uh, I understand we need to improve recruiting and retention numbers, but we can't skimp on quality. Can you please walk the committee through the, the process here, Secretary Raven? Uh, yes, I appreciate that opportunity. Uh, so the, uh, the policy relates to giving commanders the option of extending uh, enlistments or re-enlistments to sailors uh, who had not passed previous uh, fitness standards. Uh, this is an option given to commanders to assess on an individual basis, can the sailor be brought up to the, the right physical standards uh, to perform that mission, and is that sailor performing a mission in the Navy uh, that is needed? Uh, again, this is an option being given to commanders, not, not, a, not a direction. Thank you for that. Um, you know, the way I see it, there are far too many threats facing America in the military. Is not a place to practice social experiments or push radical agendas. I appreciate your updates and the panel's time today. And Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Senator Bud. Uh, Senator Duckworth, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 